If you love the paranormal and are a fan of podcasts, Hillbilly Horror Stories is definitely a must listen. And joining me now is the husband and wife duo behind it all, Jerry and Tracy Pauly. Hey, hey everybody. Hi. Hi, okay. thanks for having us. Absolutely. Okay, so recently, Hillbilly Horror Stories hit a huge milestone, 10 million downloads. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations to you both, because that, that's just huge. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Does it we kind still- of blow your minds to know that that many people are listening to you? Every single day. Every day. We are still like, what? You know, it's, but it's just amazing. That is so cool. Okay, now for anyone who hasn't joined in on, on all the fun yet, can you tell us a bit about Hillbilly Horror Stories and what listeners can expect? I would say basically it's, I always like to say that it's it's enough story and history for the true paranormal fan, but there's enough comedy and uh, kind of side antics for just the casual listener that really doesn't believe. I think everybody can enjoy the show just from an entertainment standpoint. But we talk about all things unexplained, haunted. It could be exorcisms. It could be haunted places all over the world. Uh, or it could be unexplained uh, missing appearances, you know, like in the state parks or something like that. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. And Jerry, okay, your fascination with the paranormal started as a child. Is it true you actually lived in a haunted house? Correct. We moved into a house when I was 13 years old. About a year later, we started having some paranormal experiences. And uh, I think a lot of it was tied to the fact that my mother had just lost some grandparents that were really close to her. And and uh, I think maybe psychologically, some of this might have been brought on by that. And I could be because she was suffering from depression and entities can find a way to feed off of that. Or it could be like a poltergeist situation where mentally she caused some of it without realizing it. Wow. That, that scares me so much. Like I am seriously so scared of like, if I was in a haunted house, I I mean, did you like move out quickly? No, they, matter of fact, my dad still lives there and I think they've had, it's been almost 40 years ago now because I'll be 53 this year. So it will be 40 years since all this took place. My mom has since passed. She passed uh, about 15 years ago, but my dad still continues to live in that house today. Does it scare him at all? Does anything still happen? No. uh, Well, my sister lives there also. She says that there's some things that happen, but my dad was always kind of the non-believer of the group. Uh, It didn't matter what we showed him or what he experienced. He would always tell you that it he didn't believe. I think he does, but he just won't admit <laughs> to it. He just won't say it. <laughs> it's like, He's like, I'm just going to ignore this so it's not right. happening. And Tracy, what about you? When did your fascination with the paranormal start? Well, honestly, when I started this show, I never really thought about it. But as I told Jerry, it's, it's, we've come gone by has uh, made me realize that a lot of things in the past might have been paranormal. And I just now realized it. Um, so it really just started for me when I joined the show with Jerry and then now like I'm all into it. So does it scare you? Are you kind of scared of this stuff or are you just more like fascinated, interested? No, I, well, I think a little of both. I'm a little scared of it, to be honest, because I'm like, you know, we go to these places and like we went to see Robert the doll. Um, and you know, they say you have to ask permission to take a picture and we weren't doing it until we said, Hey, can we take a picture? I wasn't having it. So yeah, no. <laughs> so you saw that doll in real life. I'm like, yeah. so scared. Oh yeah. Wow. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Okay. And so, so some other important elements to your podcast, along with the paranormal and comedy are, are your support of civil servants around the world and bringing awareness to mental health issues. What inspired you both to integrate those topics into the podcast as well? We've always been, a, a, obviously, a fan of the military and civil servants, police officers, fire department, uh, ambulance drivers, EMS, every, everybody who either puts their life on the line or they do a job that's a thankless position to, for the betterment of everyone around them. We just feel like they just don't get enough uh, respect uh, and they don't get the thanks that, that they deserve. And we just want to make sure that we give them that thanks every single episode. Every single episode. That is so awesome. And what about like the topic of mental health? The mental health way back, man, I want to say it was episode 30 or so. We're up to like 345. So it's, it's been a lot of episodes, but like episode 30, we did the Japanese suicide forest. And during that time, I felt the need since we were talking about a sensitive subject to share my story, which involved a failed suicide attempt back in uh, 2001. Matter of fact, uh, March of 2001, so we're coming up on the 20-year anniversary. 
And as we shared that story, uh, I, I just talked about it. Mental illness wasn't something to be ashamed of. And, and I tried to use ourselves as an example that even though I was at rock bottom and felt like there was uh, no other choice but to end it all, that luckily it didn't happen. And now my life is as good as I could have ever thought it would have been. And, it, and I th just thought it was important for people to know that it doesn't matter how bad it gets. There is a bright side if you'll just stick it out. And I, I think there's too many people in the world that suffer from mental illness, whether it be depression or anxiety issues or bipolar or any of those issues that feel like that's something to be embarrassed about. And once we did it on that show and talked about it, we just felt going forward that that's what we needed to do. So we just went ahead and every episode after that, we've made sure to give out the suicide hotline. We've given out our personal phone numbers wow. over the air to our 20,000 listeners. And we probably filled three to four phone calls and five to six messages every week from people who just want to talk. That is incredible. And Jerry, you actually recently released a book that talks about your own struggles with mental health as well. I did. Oddly enough, I have it right here. <laughs> Coincidence. Now, uh, you know, we, we were asked a bunch of times if we would write a book. A lot of paranormal podcasters do. And, and I've said for years, the first three years, we don't have anything to write. I mean, I'm telling ghost stories, which is cool, but we kind of write a little story every week. What's the point of rehashing it in a book? But I started thinking, you know, I've got the paranormal experiences that I had growing up as a child. I suffered through a divorce, went through depression, and have battled that for 20 years, a failed suicide attempt. And I thought that would be a good story to get out there, but mainly because on the podcast, because we do use that as a platform to reach so many people that I thought that's what the book needs to be. It needs to be my interest in the paranormal experiences, my suffering and battling depression, and how we combine those two in the podcast to try to, to reach out and give a platform for people to realize that they're not, you know, they're normal, just like everybody else. They just have some issues and, and they just need to be able to reach out and to give them that outlet. Absolutely. And, and speaking of an outlet, you actually have a Facebook page that has truly turned into a supportive community. Is this is this right? You got to tell me about this. Yeah, it's a Facebook group. It's the Hillbilly Horror Stories group. So anybody listening, if you feel like you need some help, uh, it's going to ask you to answer some questions. Just, you know, when it asks why you want to join, just tell them you heard about it on Great Day Live and we'll make sure you get in. We're very particular about who gets in because it is a private group and we want people to feel safe. But the beauty about this group, it's got 5,000 people in it. And at any point in time of the day, there's somebody from all around the world that's on that page. So if you're having some struggles and you're like, man, I really had a, a horrible day today and, and I lost my job and, and I don't, I'm about to be homeless. I don't know what I'm going to do. Trust me, within a matter of 10 minutes, you're going to have 30 or 40 responses of encouragement from people on there. And that is probably out of you know the 10 million downloads man that's awesome but there is nothing we're ever going to be more proud of than that group Absolutely. because we've gotten message after message after of people saying they either sought help or they were going to commit suicide and decided not to because of the encouragement they got from that group and like i said there we, we couldn't be happier or more proud of that group and what it what it stands for Wow, that is really incredible. And now I know people are going to want to check out your podcast. Where is the best place to go to do that? You can listen anywhere that you get podcasts. You can listen on iHeart, uh, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. If you're listening to a, a podcast app somewhere, we're on it. Fantastic. I just want to thank you both so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. I appreciate it. It's our honor.